Okie doke. So today is going to be a two for one. What I am going to do is uh, do two pours simultaneously and I'll explain why in a moment. So I'm going to put this aside for a second. Um, this is the Cascade Mold from Pouring Your Heart Out eBay store. It's a wonderful mold. As you can see, I have two of them. This one I slightly damaged, so I am going to still try to see if it'll work. So I am doing again the metallic dolly dot technique from Lillian, resin art by Lillian. I will put her uh, course link below. I did not do this with on camera. I did it off camera. And this is an idea from Julie from Pouring Your Heart Out where I dusted the crevices of my mold with super bronze mica powder from Pearlex. And I'll show that to you in a moment. Right here. It's a beautiful color. This color is octopus inks and I am using the teal for my first color. Then what I did is the bronze I mixed in resin and I'm going to pour this on the edge of my mold. So once you do the course, um, you will know what I'm talking about. So the first is I'm going, I, well, I did the teal. Now I'm doing the super bronze on the edge of my mold. And hopefully, if this is successful, you'll see why I dusted the crevices first. Don't want to waste my resin, so I'm just going to go sort of outside the edge there. Now, now, <laughs> sound like a teacher, uh, which I'm not. Um, I am now going to, what I did though was I used Just Resin Titanium White Pigment Paste, mixed it in my resin, and now part of the technique that you do on this is that you dot. You make dots, which is actually a technique that you will see in another course that I did which is a great course uh, from resincourses.com. She has several, several flower techniques. One of them is called the fairy flower. And in the fairy flower, you do these dots. So this kind of reminds me of that technique where you just dot. So as I dot, I'll tell you the story. So in this technique, what you do is... Um, after you do a push, which is meaning you put clear resin that I've added a little bit of interference powder to, you do, after you do a clear push and you keep dotting, you do another push. And the other push is another clean batch of resin. I'll get to resin in a moment. So as I thought, since I'm going to be doing, mixing another batch of clean resin, why don't I do more? Take out what I need for this one, put the rest of it in a wide open container so that it doesn't heat up, and then do a fairy flower. Since this is a very similar technique to the fairy flower, I thought I'd do a sort of comparison of the metallic dot versus a fairy flower. So we shall see how this experiment works. I felt ambitious today, so um, I'm going to do it, or try to do it. Now if you'll notice, there are bubbles in the center here, and per Genevieve, who has done so many metallic uh, dolly dots just beautifully, 
she suggested that maybe if we didn't torch the bubbles, we might get more of a suspension of the white and have it not drop so much. So I am going to stick by her theory. So I did it just to the center, not to the right in the center, but just outside the center. Then my next color is lemon. But what I did was I made a mistake and I put sandalwood first, thinking that it was going to be sort of orangey, but it wasn't. It was brown. So I had to quickly add some lemon to give it a little bit of a yellow because that's what I was going for. And you also add enoki to this batch. So I don't know if I'll have a contrast here, so we'll see. So then the technique on this one is you... In a, in a spiral fashion, you drop in your second color. So I don't know if I'll get much contrast, but we shall see. Okay. Then the next step oops, oop, 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 is that in another cup, I have mixed clear with a little bit of this Violet Aurora uh, mica powder that I got from Laura's Art Corner. And I mixed it in my clear. And now I am going to do the first push, which is you pour it in the center and you let all that color that you just did push to the side. And I don't want to waste resin, so I am going to sort of scrape it out. I'm so tempted to torch, but I'm not going to. Then while that settles, I'm just going to get my tools put aside here so I have a little bit more room to work. Hang on a minute. <clears throat> Then what you do is you continue dotting and I'm going to do it from the sort of the middle here from the edge to the center and this time I am going to go all the way to the center of the mold. Now please feel free to fast forward as this will take a little time but you are more than welcome to just watch. I would stop and pause, but my hands are sort of sticky from the resin, and so okay. I apologize that I can't uh, do that. So just feel free to pause, or, I mean, um, fast forward. Because I'm gonna do this for a little while. I'm going to dot to the center. And then I'm going to dot from the outside some more. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So I'm dotting, dotting, dotting. To the center. Then I'm going to come back out. I have found that I have gotten addicted to this dotting. I just almost have to dot once a day. It's really funny. It's fun. I think I'm just going to do two here and then one more row. Well, that looks like three, but let's see here. 
hard to keep um, like a symmetric set of rows of dots. And I want to make sure I keep some of my white because after the second push, I'm going to need my white to dot again. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. And um, I will pause for a moment and and mix a clear batch, a new clean clear batch. Be right back. Alrighty, I am back and I have poured out my last push, which is just clear. I'm going to put that in the center. Hopefully fill up the, all the way to the edge of my mold. Go back to my piping bag. I'm going to push it all the way to the end. And I'm going to start from about here. And I'm making my dots much smaller. And the last few that I've done on this technique, I haven't put a center, to, but today I am, just for the fun of it. Because I have liked the effect of no center glitter. I'm trying to make these, these little ones as small as possible. Then I'm going to go back out. Oops. I'm going to go back out some more. I'm going to make these smaller. I wonder if um, these are much smaller. So let's see if that does something different for me. holding my breath again. I seem to do that a lot. <clears throat> I think I'll do one out here since I have some resin left over in my white. It's just funny this I just for me I just can't stop. <laughs> so and I'm, but I'm making them much smaller to see if that will make any difference. Almost done. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. So what I did is, um, oh, I'll, I'll put in some crushed glass that I got from Michael's. <clears throat> Just drop a very slight amount, uh, very few, I don't want a lot. I'm gonna poke it down. Whoops! I like how it just swallows up. 
you like the sound effect of the whoops? Okay, fun, fun, fun. Now I'm going to torch. Okay, now I'm going to um, cover this momentarily. I know um, Miss Julie Cuts doesn't recommend that, but I'm going to sort of brace it with my calculator so that there's some air and that it's not completely closed because I am going to do the two for one. The next one is using the same cascade mold and this time I'm using a bunch of different products so I will go ahead and mix them and get them ready and be right back. But I wanted to show you uh, I learned from Miss Julie at Pouring Your Heart Out, if you use a wider rim container, your resin won't heat up as fast. And since I was pouring the last push and had time that I needed to do the dots, I thought I'd do that for my simultaneous second piece. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to move this aside for just a second because I am going to be doing a dirty pour. And my ink of choice is coal, um, Holbein. Holbein. I'm using Dioxacid Violet, Quinacridone Crimson, Hansa Yellow, and I'm this time I am using Bloom Pigment Paste from Pouring Your Heart Out. You can get it at her eBay store as well. So the dirty pour is you put one color in, your second color. your third color and then you alternate well I'm actually going to put yellow in between the colors and this is the fairy flower technique from resincourses.com and I'm also doing a variation of it from Julie cuts at pouring your heart out she has uh, done many of these and you can check out her YouTube channel and she's done a variation which I would like to follow and try um, one of the things is that on the fairy flower your petals are really tight and not puffy like the metallic dot so what I'm trying to do is maybe do a sort of in between of the two uh, I got to say though, when I experiment, it's dangerous because they usually doesn't, doesn't work out because <laughs> uh, I just usually follow direction and uh, I do better at that. But I'm going to try that technique of where I want to get more, um, a little bit less tight petals that you do, that you get from the fairy flower. So I've done my dirty pour. So that looks kind of cool. Bringing back my mold. May have to get another one of these. It's really, really fa my favorite one. Then I am you in the fairy technique. You do a spiral, and I haven't done that in a while. Shall I do it? Shall I not? I'll just, just do it. I'll just, I'll just do this one, and I'll just gently turn my container around. And I haven't used this particular mold for this technique, so I am trying it out. Looks really dark. Okay, then I still have some more, so I am going to use it all up. I don't know if I should, well, maybe I'll try this on this part, this one here, just do a spiral on this. This is just to use up all the resin that I've mixed. I kind of recalculated what I would need for this mold. Hopefully my math was right. Yellow. I'm gonna use up all of this. Help when that happens. And my last red. 
And this time too, I am going to try Genevieve's idea of not torching to maybe make the um, white more suspended and not come down and flatten out and be tight. So we shall see. Okay. Now I have some more here. Just gonna put it in. So now that I've done that, oh boy. I'm going to do my now on the fairy tech flower technique, you just do one push, but I am going to try Miss Julie's technique where she um, does it twice. Majority first. And this is the um, clear that I've mixed with some of the yellow. So I'm just gonna go up high like that, pour quite a bit of it. Not torch. And then with my piping bag that has the bloom, a little hole and I'm gonna start whoops didn't mean it to be so big I'm going to just gonna I should have watched her video again I can't remember how uh, if she did it all the way but I will and I'm gonna make my way out And what I'm going to do on this is um, I am going to wait to put my glitter in the center because I might do a syringe if I find that my petals are not closing. So we shall see. I'm going to go all the way around. So this one I did with titanium white just resin. This one I'm doing um, bloom pigment paste. Isn't that interesting, that shape of that? Hmm. Interesting, interesting. This And this looks different than my normal fairy only because I used less amount of bloom pigment paste on this because ex I'm experimenting to see if I can get um, some larger petals in a fairy flower. So feel free to fast forward. I gotta make sure I leave some some more white because I am going to come back and do some M's on the edge. So it's and the M's, if you've taken the resin course, courses.com course, um, it's called the dragonflower, and the dragonflower you put M's on the edge and the inside. So I'm gonna try, and this I think Julie also did. So I just always like to follow Julie. She's She's my lead. Just fill up the space here. Okay, then now I'm going to do my second push, which is the rest of this resin. If you haven't signed on to resincourses.com, you really need to. She has some beautiful courses in there. 
Okay, now I'm going to do my M's. Okay, Ooh. then I'm going to go put some on the outside here. Sure looks different. Uh, well, I wanted to do a comparison of two techniques and two whites. Uh, titanium white by Just Resin and the Bloom Pigment Paste. Maybe what I should have done is maybe the two different uh, pigments paste with same technique. Now these I'm hoping to go smaller. So I'm going to leave it like this and um, I am going to torch and then I'm going to wait a while to see how it's doing and if it's not closing like I think it should, I'll, um, I'll do the syringe and I will, I will come back on camera for that. I just thought I'd put a few more here. Oops, I don't want to get too close to the other one. Like I said, I, I, it's hard to stop dotting. Very difficult for me. It's just so freaking fun. Okay, that looks Looks good. Okay, so I am now going to let this settle and see if I need to suction, um, not suction, <laughs> syringe, and then um, put in my glitter, and I will be back. Well, I'm trying to decide if I want to syringe or not because I kind of wanted to test the theory of less um, bloom pigment if that'll make my petals larger and I did put the flashlight that uh, Julie on pouring your heart out has recommended for us to look but I can't quite see I think uh, so oh gosh do I syringe and then or not so oh god what do I do um I think I think I'm going to syringe just a little bit and then put my glitter um although you're supposed to syringe till you get some of the white out so oh gosh I don't know what to do at this point because I want to test the bloom Pigment. So you know what? I'm not going to syringe today uh, because, he, yeah, here we go. I did less bloom pigment so be, to test whether my uh, petals would be puffier. So if I, the syringe is usually when you uh, want to close the center and not have a center blob, but I'm going to, I'm not going to do that. So I am actually going to just pour this in, but I'm going to get a different cup so that I can control the flow. Because then if I didn't get, you know, the closing of the center or whatever, I can always do the syringe next time. Because the, the test is to see if I can get the blue, the less bloom pigment to make it not have a blob center.
and I may never know because I'm, oh gosh, I put so much uh, crushed glass in the center, so. Do that for good luck. Okay, that's it. I'm going to um, torch and we will reveal these two tomorrow, but just a few seconds for you. So let's see how this is looking right now on the two for one. So, so wouldn't that be nice if they both turn out on my first two for one? All right, see you shortly, everyone. All righty, it's reveal time. Let's first see how the metallic dot turned out. Oh boy. Ooh, please turn out, please turn out. Yes, very nice. And it was okay with the little um, uh, glitter in the center. And I love that idea of brushing the um, mica powder on the edges. Happy with that one. And now on this one. This is the fairy flower technique. Oh, pretty, 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 pretty. Very pretty. So next time I am going to try this one also with the idea of Julie's where you dust the crevices and um, uh, put pour my uh, pour my, excuse me, pour my resin. But you know what? There is a little bit of a clear center, so I will do the syringe next time. But then, you know, if I did that, it'll distort these petals. So I don't know what I'll do, but this is your two for one. Thank you so much for watching.